Let's talk about whether or not this is still an investable market at record highs, or do you have to wait for pullbacks? Well, we definitely think it's an investable market, but what you have to do is look at the uh, actual stocks rather than the overall market. It was a very strong earnings season, actually the strongest on record with about 85 percent beats, and the beats were pretty significant, 10 and 20 cents per share rather than the one or two pennies. Having said that, there's still a lot of stocks that did well, but the stocks sold off significantly sell 10 to 20 percent below their highs. And if they're selling at 15 to 18 times earnings, have good prospects. We think that's where you want to place your money rather than chasing the things that have been really hot. All right, so then let's let's go through this because I know that you have a lot of those kinds of stocks, those setups on your radar. What exactly are the types of companies that you are looking at for those pullbacks that you would commit new capital to? Well, it's really in a lot of different industries, but in the last few days, there have been a number of healthcare companies that had good numbers, good outlooks, but not good enough for the market, and they sold off. So Beckton Dickinson is a real quality company. We think that they do well over the next 18 months, but the stock sold off about $10 yesterday. There was a downgrade this morning, so it might be weak on the open. CVS had a really good number up their guidance, but the stock is off $3. It sells at about 10 times earnings. We think if you have a six to 12 month time frame, this is a really good place to put money. So you have that on the healthcare side. Uh, Fiserv on the technology side is sort of an overlooked tech play. Uh, with the deal earlier in this week by Square, Fiserv all of a sudden sold off about five or six dollars. We think that's a really good entry point. Very shareholder oriented management buying a lot of stock back under 20 times earnings for a fairly dynamic company. And we think that's really the key is find really good businesses, but don't pay too much for them. All right. So uh, earlier in the hour, we, we, we talked to Nancy Pryor over at Essex about uh, this notion that a lot of portfolio managers are looking for this growth at a reasonable price or GARP trade. Y you mentioned some of those names. Are, are there other places in particular? I, I think to myself, are there still places like, say, in energy, even even after the big run? Are there still places in technology or comm services, even after we've seen runs like that, that still have that kind of growth profile, but still trade at reasonable valuations? Well, some uh, places have had these uh, significant pullbacks, even in the hottest sector. So on the energy side, we still like Schlumberger and we like Chevron. We think they're poised for another leg up. But longer term, we do have some concerns about energy. You saw the president and electric vehicles yesterday. We think there definitely is going to be a trend which is going to slow down demand. So we think of energy more as a trade, but we do think uh, if you get another 10 to 25 percent on the upside, then we'd be selling that. In terms of technology, Qualcomm had a robust quarter, but it's off a few dollars in the last week. We think you can step in there. Uh, so, you know, utilities, we think, are, are pretty attractive here. And the financials, which were robust for the first six months of the year, pulled back over the last month and a half. We think that's a great new entry point, a company like M&T Bank, Truist Financial, uh, very well positioned. And, and again, uh, finan um, sorry, healthcare companies uh, like an Amgen, also pretty attractive in a Merck. One of those uh, characteristics that defines some of those companies and industries that you just spoke about is this notion that they either provide decent dividend yields for investors right now, they're income type producing investments, or, or they're engaged in stock buybacks or will be in the future. If you're an income oriented investor, are there still places that you want to go look for that, that might provide you the safety of some uh, less price volatility yet still pay you some of those decent sized dividends with yields right now for the 10 year basically at one and a quarter percent? Wonderful question. Great point. We think that is probably the best area of the market. The dividend payers have done probably the worst over the last 12 months, and we think therein lies an opportunity. There are a lot of good, slow and steady companies. Uh, that we think you're getting a three and a half to four percent yield, where, as you said, you're getting 1.2 on a 10 year bond. We think it's a great opportunity. That's the next place the market's going to do well. Companies like Verizon, Kimberly Clark, really good, slow and steady. Con Ed, we think also very safe and growing dividends. So that's really a place that we think you can put some of your income oriented money and get appreciation over time.